Good morning, Franco Valentino. How, how are you this morning, Franco? I'm doing great. Thank you, Steve. That's awesome. So, Franco, you are the founder of Narrative SEO, and you like to describe your organization as a collective of, of experts pulled together to, uh, to solve problems for your client. That's right. Um, thank you for that. And we are, um, yeah, we, we, we sort of describe ourselves as a, a technical SEO consultancy. Uh, we're based in Nashville and we serve clients in the United States and Europe. And we have uh, subject matter experts in, in varying fields that have uh, a lot to do with growth hacking. Very interesting. Very interesting. So that, that, act, that covers a lot of, uh, of relevant information. You know, t uh, we're, we're, we're looking uh, to understand what your uh, collective, uh, what services your collective provides for your clients, what makes you unique. Um, and and uh, we'd like to hear some uh, success stories. What uh, uh, stories that um, provide uh, background for your credibility in SEO. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So one of the, um, since we work in a very technical field, we sort of, we like to explain it uh, like this. What we do is we remove digital sludge from the foundation of websites. And we, we typically work with either digital marketing agencies or, or the CMO staff, right? Somebody on the digital marketing staff within a larger organization that's in charge of uh, making sure their website doesn't leak leads, conversions, and sales. Right. Makes sense. Yep. So um, the, I, I guess the, uh, uh, from the service uh, standpoint, what we do is we, we start with a technical SEO audit, uh, not only the on-page portions of the websites, but uh, we look at the digital interconnections between the greater internet, the search engines, and a user's platform to see where there are opportunities for improvements. And those improvements can be speed, uh, it could be security, and you know, keyword growth or conversion optimization. Right on. Interesting. So can, can you uh, give us some insights into where you see uh, short-term and long-term challenges in SEO and what, what, how SEO is going to trend um, into to 2020 and beyond? Absolutely. So interestingly enough, we actually published an article um, this year that was titled, Is SEO Dead in 2019? And that topic is sort of a, a playground for technical SEOs. And, you know, we've been flirting with number one, number, you know, first or second slot of Google for a long time. Uh, we did it with, a, with a, a partner agency of ours. And in that article, we forecasted the growth of something called entity-based search. And what that means is search engines are using uh, they're trying to understand nouns. They're things, not strings anymore, where you can typically, historically, you would have a keyword, and then you would try to rank that keyword uh, and take the traffic position that way. Search engines have become much smarter. They're AIs now, and they're trying to understand entities, meaning they know who Steve Wetmore is. Uh, they know who Bill Gates is, and subsequently, they will, you know, they know the relevancy of that search term. So, um, what we forecasted with it was that that was going to grow, right? And and the way that it's growing is they all of the search engines got together, uh, Google being Yahoo, Yandex, and they came up with something called Schema.org, and it's almost like a it's a it's a language, it's a programming language, but it's a reverse API, meaning instead of them trying to crawl your site and understand what you're about, they gave us the opportunity to to set up some structure and feed them that data. And there are item types for just about any nouns that we can think of, all right? These people, places, or things. Now, the opportunity there is that they have taken this entity information and they've come up with SERP features. You know, when you search for an event like a concert, you get this really rich data on your phone where you can save the event, you can forward it, you know what time it is, you can, you know what time the event happens, and you can even buy tickets to the event. That is a SERP feature that is fed by schema markup. And right now, it's sort of the Wild West. Only 7% of websites globally are using it at this point. So there's a massive early adopter advantage as this technology matures. Very interesting. I, I have been using it within uh, Gutenberg Editor. They've got uh, uh, canned blocks that allow you to work with uh, frequently asked questions or lists. Yeah. 
Right, right. And that's, and that's wonderful. And, and everyone should be taking advantage of that. Uh, now, schema.org is a large repository. Let's think about the, the medical industry got hit very recently with a lot of Google updates because uh, they're in a space called YMYL, which means your money or your life. Uh, these, are, these are highly emotionally charged things that people you know, tend to convert easily on. Uh, like your health, right? If, if someone, God forbid, has a, a massive illness and you put up a website saying, I can cure this illness, well, and you're not a doctor, you should not be ranking number one for that particular term. So uh, search engines got much smarter over the past year or two on this. And the medical space, um, there's a lot of schema. So you'll see WebMD, for example, if you look at their platform, you'll see massive amounts of schema that have to do with um, medical uh, diagnosis medical industry, medical um, treatments, and clinical information. And that really is a differentiator for the industry, as long as those people are authoritative, you know, actual doctors that have, um, you know, degrees and pedigrees in, in the fields that they do. Similarly, a lot of other, or, uh, you know, lawyers, um, people in the debt relief space, that's where we're seeing the biggest opportunity for, for people that are shysters, for example, right? Because the search engines have gotten smart enough to, uh, to, to throttle down the ones that aren't actually trustworthy. Right. Great. And, and how, what, what, okay, this is, uh, this is not a, I got, uh, this is a poorly phrased question. Okay. Um, so as a, as a website owner that, that finds himself in the, uh, uh, your life, your money, uh, part of the world, right. uh, how, how would you structure your your website with um you know to to help create authority and 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 make it easier for google to 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 find the chain of uh, you know uh, of your your history uh, of your credentials right so this is a th that's a large argument that's a great question by the way this is a very uh, large argument on on the web in in our technical seo circles how do we boost something called eat so that's expertise authoritativeness and trust it's it's not necessarily a rank factor it's made up of many multi smaller algorithms that are <clears throat> part of the larger google algorithm and what it does is it looks for it looks for trustworthiness on a page. So let's say that you are a physician, uh, or or you are a financial you know a, a financial guru that actually has some uh, a degree in in finance. It'll look on the about page and see, for example, try to match up your university and your degree to that particular university. So some of the things that you can do are on your about page. Make sure that you link out to where you got your degree. Um, so because these are relevant signals, Google does crawl the web and it spiders all the content, right? So it can find these small signals between between relevant websites to say, yes, we, we're going to give him a little bit of a boost because he did graduate from and he has the appropriate degree to be talking about this particular subject. Um, same thing with uh, so that's one. Another one is getting links from your university or from a clinic that you worked at or a bank that you worked at, for example, onto your about page. So those are, again, this takes time. This is not something that you're going to do overnight, but as a whole, over time, that will get you better position and better search visibility because you are authoritative and you are trustworthy. And those signals can be sent not only in the, in the regular HTML, but between, those, between linking across those platforms. Oh, another thing is schema markup. If you can send those signals in the metadata, that really helps Google understand it faster. So it's not that that alone is going to get you more search visibility, but it will build your entity relationship um, in search and then subsequently, again, help it understand who you are and what you do. Wow, that's great. That's great information. Um, yeah, I can't add anything to more to that. So sure. that's I'll, awesome. I'll add one. I'll add, I'll add one other thing. <laughs> the, 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 the biggest winners, by the way, I, and, and in our estimation, are going to be the e-commerce e shops, because e-commerce shops that take advantage of these uh, of metadata and of, of schema.org, they get enhanced uh, SERP features. And let me define SERP for for folks that may not know what that is: search engine result position. So when you Google something, those 10 entries that show up on your page, that's called the SERP, so the search engine result position. In on mobile, uh, there are more features because we, are, we live now in a primarily mobile world. So uh, in e-commerce, there are things like a Google Merchant Center, right? You can sign up for an account. You can send it product feed information. 
And if you do that and your competitors don't, well, you have a uh, first mover advantage. So if you have a, a healthy site with, you know, decent traffic, um, first of all, the, the technical basics never change. You, your site has to be secure. It has to be fast. That's critically important. For every second of slowdown in your website, that's somewhere between a 7 and 20% loss of conversion. So, so we always look at the basics first. But then early adopter advantage is going to be the schema markup, especially for e-commerce. Very interesting. So, um, you know, as we all uh, start to experiment with uh, schema markup and and we actually use it on our websites and and you you uh, are using for example google search console right. and google console identifies problems that you're having it shows you very clearly that you've got an error right but the when you look at it as a you know as a novice the you look at the error you right. just have i have absolutely zero how to fix <laughs> right. the problem sure. i just can't sure. figure it out right so where do you go who who would you go to to solve that problem for you right so um as a novice and you know if if someone um doesn't necessarily uh, know a technical seo or have you know the background for it because you know it, it is a very specialized field the <laughs> Google is not very helpful in the help file either because they tend to write, um, you know, very technically as well. So when they say, you know, you're missing, you're missing a parent within this part of schema markup in the code, where do you go? <laughs> right. So yeah. the first place I would do if, if I didn't know anything about this industry would be YouTube and literally just Google the error that you got and somebody will have explained that issue in, in, a, in a fairly non-technical way. So as a, as a small, small business owner, um, you know, that that's that's probably the, the shortest path to success. For a larger website, things tend to get much more complicated. And you know, the error that they're seeing could be uh, the result of some other cause. So in that, in that, if you're having that problem and you're a larger entity, you, you need to reach out to some type of technical SEO to say, hey, look, can you at least you know, give me an hour or two here and tell me, if, uh, tell me if this really is something wrong or if this is just the tool alerting on something that really isn't, um, you know, really isn't a problem because that will happen as well. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, Google Search Console or any one of the other technical SEO tools like Screaming Frog or SEM Rush or, or, or something like that are, are not precise because they are, but sometimes they alert on things that aren't quite as a priority as some other things. And, and one of those things, for example, is if you're a large e-commerce shop and you're getting, um, let's say you're getting flagged for duplicate content errors because you have mirrored pages or something like that. Um, we wouldn't even start looking at that. We would actually look at the protocol versions, as we mentioned, right? So HTTP one versus HTTP two. You know, are, is your website uh, as fat from a, from a server standpoint as fast as it can be? Because that will give you that's the eighty twenty there, right? That that's the Pareto. Uh, I can if I fix this twenty percent of the problem, I'll get eighty percent better results. So uh, again, take it with a grain of salt. Understand it. Don't go crazy over it, but ask somebody that can guide you along that uh, along the path to to correcting it. Right on. It, you know, it strikes me that that as this this new uh, technology or new uh, uh, this new technical SEO develops, that there is tremendous opportunity for SEOs to specialize and and just tackle um, you know the errors and how 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 to correct the errors and how to how to structure the website so that as you you add uh, more information, more blog posts, more product, e-commerce site that, um, you know, that as the data is added, it's added correctly. It, you're giving Google what, what they need. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a lot of specialization within this field. It's almost like the medical field. You know, someone is a, you know, an, a brain surgeon, the other one is a bone doctor. So uh, it's very similar to that. And, uh, you know, as technical SEOs, you know, we try to have a big network where, you know, I, I sometimes rely on developers that are technical SEO developers with j for just schema markup, because even, you know, that in, in itself is a, is an art form. Uh, and then, you know, from, from, my network engineering background, it's more of the server side, right? So it, it, it's, you know, you can pick, the wonderful thing about this field is you pick something that you really enjoy and then dive deep into it. And 
uh, and you actually can help people. You know, this, the, these things do matter quite a bit oh, yeah. versus just uh, adding content. You know, if the platform and the server aren't right uh, or there's enhanced data that you're not seeing, it could be the difference between you winning uh, uh, online versus your competitor. Right. Agreed. Excellent. Wow. That, uh, that's like amazing, amazing information, Franco. That's really, really good. Fantastic. Um, I'm honored to help. Yeah. So, um, do you have any other uh, massive snippet that you can <laughs> share with? <laughs> sure. Uh, let's think about something here. All right. So, the, the two biggest things that we see uh, number one, there are still websites out there, large ones that have decent traffic that don't have a security certificate. If you don't have SSL installed, it, it was time four years ago to add it. It is a clear rank factor and it will give you more keywords and potentially more traffic by having a security certificate. Number one. Number two, if your website isn't loading in two seconds or less, at least the above the fold, you know, the things that people see initially, then you're losing about 64% of your visitors by the time you hit three seconds. Speed wow. is the single most critical factor for anything you're doing online right now. So I would say before you get too advanced in things, let's, let's go back to the SEO 101 stuff and focus deeply on speed, security, and then subsequently you'll get more traffic just by looking at those two things. Fantastic. Great, great information, Franco. Excellent. Um, so when we talk about SEO tools, mm -hmm. um, people start, people's eyes start to glaze over and um, because it, it's all the same. So most we're finding most people are using Ahrefs, Moz, and SEMrush. Um, what I'm looking for here is if you've got anything unique that you can share and uh, and and talk about that. Uh. Sure, sure. Um, uh, yes, those are the typical SEO tools. Now, Google Search Console has actually added a lot of new features over the past six months to a year. One of the most important ones that they have added is something called the Crux Report, the Page Insights. So it's it's a speed report. Uh, whereas normally we would rely on PageSpeed Insights, which is a tool that Google publishes. It's just a website, Google PageSpeed Insights, and you'll see it. It crawls your site and gives you a lot of technical information. Some of it will make your gla eyes glaze over, but it, <laughs> but it will give you a zero to 100 marker on on some things that you can fix relatively quickly. And if you can't fix them, you know, hand them to your web developer, and they'll know how they'll know what to do. Um, PageSpeed Insights is a wonderful tool. Uh, and again, it's free and it's just a website that Google publishes for you. The new, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, well, I'm, I'm on Google Search Console right now. Uh -huh. And so there's overview, index, and enhancements. I see speed That's brackets it. experimental. Yeah, the speed so experimental report is the one that you want to look at. Now, you gotcha. will not get any data unless your website has had enough visits where Chrome uh, browser can send enough uh, enough can analyze on an average how fast your pages are. So you may not see data in there yet, but if you're if you do have traffic and you have a, a decent amount of traffic, you'll see the speed report in there, and it'll give you a, a you know sort of a poor average and, and good metric. The metric that they that they measure it off of is first contentful paint. So some the, the the first meaningful thing that a user sees on the screen and how fast that loads. So again. The, it's not gospel. It's a it's an average of things that can help contribute to making your website fast. There's also a natural, but the best thing you can do is navigate to your website and count in your head how many seconds it takes to load. If you don't feel like it's loading fast enough, think like a user, right? And sure. you want to get it down to about a second or two. That really it's very difficult to do, but that's the world we live in right now. It, you know, we are we are we are non patient people. <laughs> okay, so let's touch on the the practicality of the how um so i've got a website that's approaching six years old mm -hmm. I, i've been told by my developer that i have a lot of um i've had too many uh plugins that have been used we decided to change so we disabled removed and any uh, it's been explained to me that there's a lot of uh uh scrap data left kind that contributes to slowing the website down um, a whole lot of reasons maybe maybe my host isn't fast enough right. what to 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 execute i know there's a lot of um, resource info online you can go to like you said go to youtube um, but what how would you like do you have a, a checklist or, or an approach 
to solve that problem in terms of speed? Sure. Um, speed is is made up of many different factors, as you mentioned, right? So the quality of the server that you're that you're sitting on is critically important. That's where the HTTP one versus HTTP two protocol is, is actually gets turned on, right? You don't have control over that unless you have you know access to your server. So picking a quality host is really important. Uh, companies like WP Engine. Liquid Web, uh, Flywheel, who I think just got bought by WP Engine, but those are going to be qualified hosts. And qualified, I mean, they 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 mark all of those checkboxes you just mentioned off, which will they're too extensive from a technical standpoint to kind of rattle off on the call. But um, so having a good quality host, one that costs more than three dollars a month <laughs> to host your website, right? <laughs> yes. You want to pay somewhere around the twenty to thirty dollar mark is about where you need to be. Um, that that goes a long way. The the next step, immediate next step, is your point don't have a lot of plugins use only the ones that you really need and if you have plugins that are disabled strip them out of the website right away because the code still gets injected on every page so there's something called page bloat or the weight of a page we typically budget before we create a piece of content like a pillar page for a client uh, we'll say look this page can be no more than 500 kilobytes uh, in size so you have to really think about the size of images that you're putting on there and, and by the way images are the pareto you typically everyone every website I we, we audit has images that are much much larger than they, than they need to be so that is a really good first step and that will contribute to a much faster website if you can uh, as an example if you're using a PNG that doesn't need a transparency if, you, if the image doesn't need a transparent background you shouldn't use a PNG it's much bigger than a JPEG so use uh. a JPEG where you can so file formats are very important and if you're using a JPEG where a WebP format would work, a WebP is you know maybe twenty percent the size of a JPEG, and without losing quality. So it's just thinking deliberately about number, images uh, will will get you a lot farther than you are today. Wow, fantastic, Franco, that was awesome. That you you just you just uh, push the uh, the 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 envelope. Uh, Excellent. Excellent. We going like to, right to the top. <laughs> we like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Now I'm glad it's uh, hopefully it provides value to someone. Well, it, it, it really did, and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to rush to get this published as soon as possible. And again, I will share it with you as soon as I, I get it completed. And again, Franco, really enjoyed our, our pre-conversation. Uh, I'm going to stop.